Imagine starting every day feeling unstoppable, with the knowledge that you hold the key to creating the life you've always dreamed of. Sounds too good to be true? It's not. The power to manifest your desires is already inside you, as simple and effortless as flipping a switch. Dr. Ernest Holmes believed this divine power is always accessible, waiting for you to activate it. So many of us walk around feeling stuck, not realizing we're carrying a secret superpower. Dr. Ernest Holmes taught that each of us has a divine power within, just waiting to be used. It's like electricity running through your home, always there, but needing you to flip the switch. Flipping that inner switch is just the beginning. There's another universal force that's been right under your nose this whole time. It's so familiar, you probably take it for granted. But what if I told you, this everyday power could be the key to effortlessly manifesting the life of your dreams? Think about the last time you dropped something. Did you worry that it might float away instead of falling to the ground? Of course not. You instinctively know that gravity will do its job, every single time. Now imagine if you could approach your goals and dreams, with that same unwavering confidence. You might be thinking, okay, but how do I actually do this? Well, it's simpler than you might think. Remember, you're already using this power unconsciously every day. The key is to start using it consciously. It's like learning to walk. At first it took all your concentration and effort. But now, you do it without even thinking. Using your inner divine power can become just as natural. It's about shifting your mindset, aligning your thoughts with this universal energy, and trusting in the process. Dr. Holmes taught that we're all connected to this divine intelligence, like waves in an ocean. We're not separate from this power, we're part of it. He said, every man becomes a unique manifestation of the whole, a microcosm within the macrocosm, rooted in the infinite, he personifies it. In other words, you're not just a drop in the ocean, you are the ocean in a drop. Now, I know what you might be thinking. This sounds great, but how does it actually help me in my everyday life? Well, let me ask you this. Have you ever faced a challenge, maybe financial struggles or relationship problems, and felt completely stuck? What if you could approach these situations with the same certainty you have about gravity? Just like gravity is always there, supporting you without fail, this inner power is always available to guide you towards solutions. It's about tapping into that infinite wisdom that's already within you. And the best part? You don't have to earn it or prove yourself worthy. It's your birthright, always accessible, always ready to support you. Let me share a quick story that illustrates this principle. A friend of mine was struggling financially for years. No matter how hard she worked or how many budgets she made, she always felt like she was swimming against the current. Then she learned about this concept of inner power. She started to shift her focus from her financial problems to the abundance that was always available to her. She began to trust in this inner force, just as she trusted gravity to keep her feet on the ground. Within months, opportunities started appearing out of nowhere. A promotion at work, a chance to start a side business, even an unexpected inheritance. It wasn't that she suddenly became lucky. She had simply aligned herself with the flow of abundance that was always there, waiting for her to tap into it. Now, you might be wondering, how can I start using this power in my own life? Well, it's simpler than you might think. Remember you're already using it unconsciously, just like you use gravity without thinking about it. The key is to start using it consciously. Start by paying attention to your thoughts and beliefs. Are you constantly worrying about lack and scarcity? That's like expecting things to fall up instead of down. Instead, try to align your thoughts with abundance and possibility. Trust that this inner power is always working for you just like you trust gravity to keep your feet on the ground. Practice gratitude for what you already have. This isn't just feel-good advice. It's a practical way to tune into the abundance that's already present in your life. 
The more you notice and appreciate the good things around you, the more you'll attract. And here's a powerful truth to remember. Just like gravity, your inner power is always on. It doesn't need to be earned or activated. It's a constant force in your life. The only question is whether you're working with it or against it. You've heard about the power within you, but did you know there's a way to switch it on instantly? What if I told you that you could activate your divine potential as easily as you turn on your bedroom light? This isn't just a metaphor. It's a practical technique that could transform your life. Dr. Ernest Holmes believed that accessing our inner power is as simple as flipping a switch, but it requires conscious action on our part. Think about the last time you confidently flipped a light switch, knowing the room would illuminate. You didn't doubt for a second that the light would come on, did you? That's the kind of certainty Holmes wants us to have about our own divine power. He taught that we're all connected to what he called one mind, a vast universal consciousness that we're all a part of, like waves in an ocean. Now you might be wondering, if we're all connected to this divine power, why don't I feel it all the time? Well, it's a bit like having a lamp that's always plugged in but not switched on. The power is there, ready and waiting, but it needs you to take that final step of flipping the switch. Here's where it gets really exciting. Holmes suggests that we can literally visualize flipping a switch in our minds to activate this power. It's a simple yet powerful exercise that you can do anytime, anywhere. Want to try it right now? Close your eyes for a moment. Picture a light switch in your mind. Now, as you flip that switch on, say to yourself, I am now activating my divine power. Feel the surge of energy and potential flowing through you. You might be thinking, is it really that simple? Yes and no. The act itself is simple, but it requires practice and belief to truly harness its power. Remember, you're not creating this power. You're tapping into something that's always been there, just like electricity in your home. Holmes emphasizes that it is not God's mind that needs to be changed, but ours. This means that the power is always on, always available. We just need to align our thoughts and beliefs with it. It's about shifting our perspective to see ourselves not as separate from this divine power, but as unique expressions of it. Think of it this way. You are a unique wave in the vast ocean of divine consciousness. You're not separate from the ocean. You're made of the same stuff. Your thoughts, your actions, your very being, is an expression of this universal power. When you flip that mental switch, you're acknowledging and activating this connection. Now, you might be wondering how this applies to your everyday life. Well, let's say you're facing a challenge at work. Before you dive into problem-solving mode, take a moment to flip that mental switch. Remind yourself that you're connected to an infinite source of wisdom and creativity. You might be surprised at the solutions that come to you when you approach the problem from this perspective. Or maybe you're working on a personal goal, like improving your health or relationships. Each time you make a choice related to that goal, visualize flipping the switch. You're not just making a decision. You're aligning yourself with the divine power that's always supporting you. Holmes believed that every man becomes a unique manifestation of the whole. This means that by recognizing and activating your connection to the divine, you're not just improving your life, you're fulfilling your unique purpose in the world. You're letting your individual light shine as part of the greater cosmic illumination. So you've flipped the switch and connected to your divine power. But what if that light could shine even brighter? Imagine if changing your entire life was as simple as changing a single thought. It sounds too good to be true, but Dr. Holmes believed this was not only possible, but essential. What if the key to unlocking your full potential is already in your hands? Let's talk about rewiring your mental circuits. Dr. Holmes said, if we do not like our outer circumstances, conditions, or our personality, the place to begin to change is right within our own mind. 
This isn't just positive thinking. It's about fundamentally shifting how you perceive and interact with the world around you. Think about it. How often do you catch yourself dwelling on problems instead of solutions? It's a common habit, but it's like trying to drive a car while constantly looking in the rearview mirror. You're not going to get very far. Holmes taught that the way we think is the way we act, and the way we act is what happens. So if you want different results in your life, you need to start with different thoughts. But how do you actually do this? It's not about forcing yourself to be positive all the time. Instead, it's about consciously choosing where to focus your attention. When you're faced with a challenge, try asking yourself, what's the opportunity here? Or what can I learn from this? This simple shift can open up new possibilities you might never have considered before. Another powerful tool is daily spiritual practice. Holmes emphasized that for every science, there must be a technique or a way of proving its truth. This could be meditation, prayer, journaling, or any activity that helps you connect with your inner wisdom. The key is consistency. Just like you wouldn't expect to get fit by going to the gym once a month, you can't expect to transform your mind without regular practice. Affirmations are another powerful way to rewire your thinking. Holmes suggested saying things like, I know there is a power for good, which is responding to me and bringing into my experience everything that is necessary to my unfoldment. It might feel a bit strange at first, but remember, you're not trying to convince yourself of something that isn't true. You're reminding yourself of the divine power that's always been within you. Now, you might be thinking, this all sounds great, but how does it work in real life? Let's say you're dealing with a difficult co-worker. Instead of focusing on how annoying they are, try affirming, I am open to understanding this person better. You might be surprised at how this shift in perspective can lead to a more harmonious relationship. Or maybe you're working on improving your finances. Rather than stressing about bills, try visualizing yourself as already abundant. Feel the relief and joy of financial security. This isn't about denying reality. It's about aligning your thoughts with the abundance that's already available to you through your connection to divine power. Remember, this is a process. Holmes said, nature will not let us stay in any one place too long. You might have setbacks or moments of doubt, that's okay. The important thing is to keep trusting the process and returning to these practices. You've been practicing these techniques, but something still feels off. Could it be that you're overlooking the most powerful tool at your disposal? It's not found in any book or taught in any seminar. It's been with you all along, quietly whispering the answers you've been searching for. That's right, we're talking about your intuition that gut feeling that often turns out to be right. What if you could tap into that wisdom on demand? Dr. Ernest Holmes believed that our intuition is a direct line to divine wisdom. It's like having a personal hotline to the universe, always ready to offer guidance and insights. But here's the thing. Most of us are so caught up in the noise of our daily lives that we've forgotten how to listen. Think about it. When was the last time you really tuned in to your inner voice? If you're like most people, you might be thinking, I don't have time for that. But what if taking a few moments each day to listen could save you hours of struggle and uncertainty? Holmes taught that the real creative power of the mind is deeper than the intellect. It's not about thinking harder. It's about feeling deeper. It's about tapping into that place of knowing that goes beyond logic and reason. You know that feeling when you just know something is right, even if you can't explain why? That's your intuition at work. So how do we strengthen this connection to our inner wisdom? It's simpler than you might think. Start by setting aside a few minutes each day for quiet reflection. This isn't about meditation or clearing your mind. It's about creating space to listen. You might be surprised at what comes up when you give yourself permission to be still. Another powerful tool is gratitude. Holmes believed that recognizing and appreciating the good in our lives 
enhances our connection to divine wisdom. It's like tuning your radio to the frequency of abundance and positivity. When you focus on what's going right, you become more attuned to the guidance that's always available to you. Try this. At the end of each day, write down three things you're grateful for. They don't have to be big things. Maybe you're grateful for the warm sun on your face or the smile from a stranger. As you do this consistently, you might notice that you become more aware of the little nudges and insights throughout your day. But here's where it gets really interesting. Holmes said, the mind should swing from inspiration to action. It's not enough to just receive intuitive insights. We need to act on them. This is where trust comes in. When you get a gut feeling about something, don't dismiss it. Take a moment to consider it, and if it feels right, take action. You might be thinking, but what if I'm wrong? Here's the thing. Your intuition is like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. And even if things don't turn out exactly as you expected, there's always a lesson to be learned. Remember, the universe is always working in your favor, even when it doesn't seem like it. Imagine approaching your life with the confidence that you have access to infinite wisdom at all times. How would that change the way you make decisions? How would it affect your relationships, your career, your personal growth? Holmes believed that challenges reveal our current consciousness and urge us to go within to call forth greater love, strength and awareness. So the next time you're faced with a difficult situation, instead of getting caught up in worry and stress, try this. Take a deep breath, close your eyes and ask yourself, what does my inner wisdom have to say about this? You might be surprised at the clarity that comes by tuning into your inner wisdom, you're opening direct channels to divine guidance. What messages might you be receiving right now? Pay attention to those subtle nudges, those quiet whispers of intuition. They're not random thoughts, they're signposts guiding you towards your highest good. You've been listening to your intuition, but have you been speaking back? There's a powerful tool that lets you communicate directly with the divine mind. It's something you've been doing your whole life without realizing its true potential. Are you ready to unlock it? Visualization isn't just daydreaming or wishful thinking. Dr. Ernest Holmes taught that it's a practical, powerful way to communicate your desires to the divine mind. Think of it as sending a clear, vivid message to the universe about what you want to create in your life. But here's the thing. It's not enough to just think about what you want. Holmes emphasized that this isn't a passive process. It requires active engagement, just like any other skill you want to master. You wouldn't expect to become a great pianist by just thinking about playing, would you? The same principle applies here. So, how do we put this into practice? Let's try a simple visualization exercise right now. Close your eyes for a moment. Think about something you really want to manifest in your life. Maybe it's a new job, a loving relationship, or improved health. Now don't just think about it. See it, feel it, hear it. What does it look like when you've achieved this goal? How does it feel? What sounds are associated with it? The more senses you engage, the more real it becomes to your mind. And remember, your mind doesn't distinguish between what's real and what's vividly imagined. That's why athletes use visualization to improve their performance. Their brains respond as if they're actually doing the activity. Now, you might be thinking, this sounds great, but how often should I do this? Holmes suggests making this a regular practice. Just like you wouldn't expect to get fit by going to the gym once a month, you can't expect to manifest your desires by visualizing occasionally. Set aside time each day for this practice. It doesn't have to be long. Even a few minutes can make a difference. But here's where many people go wrong. They visualize once or twice and then give up when they don't see immediate results. Remember, you're planting seeds in the fertile soil of the divine mind. Seeds take time to grow. Trust the process.
Keep nurturing those seeds with your consistent practice and be open to how they might manifest. You see, Holmes believed that everyone has access to this divine power. It's not something reserved for a chosen few. It's your birthright. In fact, he said that God is more ready to give than we are to receive. Isn't that a powerful thought? The universe is just waiting for you to tap into its abundance. Think of it this way. You're not creating something out of nothing. You're aligning yourself with the infinite possibilities that already exist. You're tuning into the frequency of your desires and allowing them to manifest in your life. Now, let's talk about emotion. When you're visualizing, it's crucial to feel the emotions associated with achieving your desire. If you're visualizing financial abundance, feel the relief and joy of being debt-free. If it's a loving relationship you're after, feel the warmth and happiness of being with your ideal partner. These emotions are the fuel that powers your manifestations. Remember, this isn't about forcing outcomes or manipulating the universe. It's about aligning yourself with the natural flow of divine energy. You're not creating the power. You're tapping into what's already there, just like using the laws of nature. So, what desire are you ready to plant in the fertile soil of divine mind? What seed will you nurture with your consistent visualization practice? Remember, every great achievement started as a single thought, a vivid image in someone's mind. You have that same power within you. Have you ever wondered why some people seem to thrive in the face of adversity while others crumble? What if I told you that your perspective on challenges could be the key to unlocking a life of abundance and growth? Ernest Holmes believed that every problem we face is actually a doorway to greater wisdom and power, if we know how to use it. Think about the last time you faced a major challenge. Did you feel overwhelmed, stressed, maybe even a little hopeless? We've all been there. But what if I told you that those feelings were actually blocking you from accessing your greatest power? Holmes taught that our challenges aren't random obstacles thrown in our path. They're actually invitations. Invitations to grow, to learn, and to tap into the infinite wisdom that's always within us. It's like the universe is giving us a pop quiz, not to test us, but to teach us. Let's talk about money for a moment. Financial struggles can feel suffocating, right? But Holmes would say that these challenges are actually revealing our current consciousness about abundance. Instead of seeing a lack of money as a dead end, what if you saw it as a call to tap into your creative power? Maybe it's time to brainstorm new income streams, or to look at your skills in a different light. Remember, Holmes said, we actually create the conditions in our life by the way we think about life. So instead of thinking, I never have enough money, try shifting to, I'm open to new opportunities for abundance. Now, let's tackle relationships. We've all had our share of heartaches and misunderstandings. But what if these challenges were actually opportunities to practice unconditional love and understanding? Holmes believed that every interaction is a chance to express more of our divine nature. Next time you're in a disagreement with someone, try this. Instead of focusing on what they're doing wrong, ask yourself, how can I bring more love into this situation? You might be surprised at how this simple shift can transform even the most difficult relationships. Health issues can be some of the toughest challenges we face. But even here, Holmes saw an opportunity for growth. While it's important to seek medical advice, he emphasized complementing it with a deep trust in the life force flowing through us. Try visualizing your body as a perfect expression of divine health. Feel the energy of life pulsing through every cell. This isn't about denying reality. It's about aligning yourself with the healing power that's always present within you. Now you might be thinking, this all sounds great, but how do I actually do this when I'm in the middle of a crisis? Great question. Holmes emphasized the importance of daily spiritual practices to prepare us for life's challenges. Start by setting aside a few minutes each day for quiet reflection. This isn't about forcing positive thoughts. 
It's about creating space to connect with your inner wisdom. You might be surprised at the insights that come when you give yourself this time. Remember Holmes said, what the world needs is spiritual conviction, followed by spiritual experience. So don't just think about these ideas, put them into practice. The next time you face a challenge, big or small, try asking yourself, what's the opportunity here? What is this situation inviting me to learn or become? You see, every challenge is like a workout for your spiritual muscles. Just like you wouldn't expect to get physically fit without some sweat, you can't expect to grow spiritually without facing some resistance. But with each challenge you overcome, you become stronger, wiser, and more connected to your divine power. We've covered a lot of ground, but here's the big takeaway. You've got divine power within you right now. It's not something you need to earn or find, it's your birthright. All you need to do is remember it and use it. Start small. Apply these principles to your daily life. Shift your mindset, listen to your intuition, practice gratitude, visualize your desires, and reframe challenges as opportunities. As Dr. Holmes said, what the world needs is spiritual conviction, followed by spiritual experience. Remember, you're not separate from this power. You're a unique expression of it, like a wave in the ocean. Every time you tap into this power, you're not just changing your life, you're fulfilling your divine purpose. So, how will you shine your light today? The power is in your hands, or rather, in your mind. Use it wisely, use it often, and watch your world transform.